Well, welcome everyone. Thank you. Welcome everyone to another broadcast of perfecting our relationship with our no other wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am your host, Tony Allen. Oh, I am so excited as always. I, it's a pleasure and such an excitement to be able to come before the Lord. Because Number one, to be able to come before the Lord. And number two, to be able to share God's heart with his people. So most of you probably noticed that I'm in a new location. And the new room is beautiful. I thank God for this beautiful, uh, vibrant location that he has here. So I'm going to try to stay focused on the word here and not absorb the beauty the beauty of this location here. <laughs> okay. For those of you who was with us last week, uh, two weeks ago, we had started down a journey of talking about the Holy Spirit and the role of the Holy Spirit. We identified and we recognized that the Holy Spirit is the most important person on earth today. And therefore, because he is the most important person on earth today, his work is the most important work to be done today. And it is our job as believers because now more than ever, it is time to embrace and to get to know who the Holy Spirit is. So today we're going to continue down that journey on who is the Holy Spirit. And our topic for today is, who is leading you? Who is leading you? So before we get started into the gems and the nuggets that God has to share with us, we're going to open up in a, in a word of prayer. Father, I just come before you in the name of Jesus, giving you thanks and giving you honor for allowing me to sit before your people and to share your heart with your people. Lord, I pray, Father God, that the word that we speak today, Father God, that no, I know that the word that you speak today is going to land on good ground. Because God, these are not my words, but these are words that has been ordered, ordained, and anointed by your spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that it shall transform the hearts of your people and give us a better understanding, God, of who you are in the person of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, as I said in the beginning, we're still on this journey of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? And what is his role and his function in our lives, in our life today? Just for a recap, for those of you who did not join us two weeks ago, and I do encourage you to take a moment to go back and review that uh, our broadcast so you can uh, be brought up to speed as we continue to talk about the most important person on earth today, which is the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Last uh, Two weeks ago, we talked about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. Not that he's least important, but because he is the last person that we see or reveal to us in Scripture today as to, to complete the plan of God the Father as far as drawing man back unto himself. We talked about the Holy Spirit, number one, being God. He is eternal. He is um, he is he he possesses all the attributes of God. He is all knowing. He is everywhere, and he is omnip he is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is omnipotent, and and he is all powerful. We talked about the Holy Spirit. He is not it. He's not a thing, but he is a person. He has personal attributes. He has a will. He has emotions. He has a will. He has emotions, and he has a mind. We talked about the Holy Spirit. He has many functions within our lives and on earth today. But the, pri the two primary functions that we did uh, capitalize on last, or last broadcast was the Holy Spirit. One of the Holy Spirit role, roles is to bring us to Christ, is to draw us to Christ. That is the Holy Spirit that bring men, to bring women unto Christ. The salvation process, that is called, we identified that as regeneration. That is the reborn process. And then the second primary role of the Holy Spirit is once we come to Christ, the Holy Spirit is the, is the, is the spirit, the power that, in, that empower us. He guide us. He lead us. He convict us. He teaches us. He show us how to live a life that is holy and righteous and perfect before God. And that process we identified as the sanctification process. And the sanctification process is ongoing. We also clarified or made, or we also clarified to our listeners, for those of you who know Jesus Christ 
as your Lord and Savior. You have accepted him. You have went through the regeneration process of the, uh, the, Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit has drawn you to him. And now you are, born, you are a born again Christian. You are in the family of God. You were sealed from salvation. The book of Ephesians 1 chapter 13 attests to the fact that for those of us who believe, the moment that you believe and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So you have it. It is in you. Now, the challenge for the challenge is the challenge for many of us is just because we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, that does not mean that we begin to live like it. That does not mean that we begin to express or let the attributes of the Holy Spirit be reflective in our life. That is an ongoing process, and that is a conscious effort, a conscious effort that you and I have to make every day. It's a choice. So once we get saved, we now have a choice to begin to surrender and to yield our life unto the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can teach us and guide us into all the truth and righteousness of God the Father. Uh, one of the things with the church, with so many of us, as I said, we stop at the salvation process and we fall in teaching new converts how to surrender and how to now uh, conform to the image of Christ, because that is God's goal for each and every one of us, to conform to the image of Christ. But unfortunately, in this season, we're seeing where the ball has been dropped, where many are not teaching on the Holy Spirit, and how to teach us how to conform to that image of Christ, so that that new life can be reflected in us. Because once we come to Christ, we are a new creature in Christ. Now it is the Holy Spirit job to allow that new life to be reflected in us. Does it happen overnight? No, it does not happen overnight. It is an ongoing process. It is something, like I said earlier, that we have to continue to do. We have to continue to make that conscious effort in seeking the Lord and asking him to guide us, to teach us, and to show us how to embrace his Holy Spirit so that his life, the life of God, can now be reflected in us. So that's why the Lord, I, and I truly believe in this season, that is why the Lord not only have uh, pressed upon my heart, but upon many people's heart during this season to begin to teach his people about that third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Because from uh, two weeks ago, we talked about God the Father. We talked about God the Father. He designed and he, he designed and he orchestrated the plan. We talked about Jesus Christ as God. We talked about uh, God in the person of Jesus Christ. He fulfills the plan. And now we're talking about the Holy Spirit role, which is to manifest or administer the plan. And that's where we are at right now in this dispensation. And more than ever, believers, we really need to know know the role and begin to embrace and to depend upon the role of the Holy Spirit within us. Because we are we 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 have not seen anything yet, and we are coming. We're we're going to be coming up against some perilous times where we are not going just relying on ourselves and our own thoughts and our own efforts is not going to cut it in these days. So I just want to encourage all of us, even after this broadcast, to spend some time in your quiet time with the Lord and begin to ask God to help you to get to know the Holy Spirit, so that you can begin to learn how to uh, walk with the Holy Spirit, to depend on the Holy Spirit to guide you and to lead you, to just rest in the peace and being developed, let align your spirit to be developed with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. So I want to start um, today in the Bible. Last week we talked about the descriptive words that Jesus that, that Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit. He referred to the Holy Spirit as the comforter. He referred to the Holy Spirit as the helper. He referred to the Holy Spirit as our strengthener, as our counselor, as the one that stand by. The Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. 
So today, I want to, we want to go down that journey, and we want to discover and talk more about the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of truth. Because in this day and age, we're going to need to know the truth. We're going to need to know what's true and what's not true, what's of God and what's not of God. And in, in the book of 1 John chapter 4, it speaks about there are two spirits in the world today, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And I hate to say, and I hate to even see, unfortunately, so many people, and I'm not even talking about those who, who do not know the Lord, so many believers are falling behind the spirit of error because they have not taken the time to sit before the Lord to hear what God has to say. The media, we hear so much in the news today. We hear the media is all over the place, just spewing out all kinds of things. And let me tell you, believers, everything that's coming through the media is not of God. That's why it's so important that we learn how to take what we hear uh, from the media and weigh it against the truth, weigh it against the uh, word of God. If the media is saying this, what is God saying? We need to learn how to just not to take everything from the media at, false val at, false, at face value, but learn how to take that and go before the Lord and pray over it and see, Lord, this is what they're saying. What are you saying? But we're so quick now to conform and to accept everything that we hear. And everything that we hear is not what the Holy Spirit is saying. So God wants us to get into the habit of attuning our ears to the throne room so that we can hear the conversation in heaven. And that is the role of the Holy Spirit to teach us that. So we're going to open up our school. We're going to open up our um, study today. And we're going to start. We're going to look at two scriptures. First, we're going to go to the book of Romans chapter 8. And before I did encourage everyone, definitely read the entire book prayerfully. And study the book of Romans because it talks about uh, Romans chap chapter 8. Because it talks about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit role and function in our lives today. So we're going to open up with Romans chapter 8. And then we're going to go to John chapter 16. But first I want to start, I want to read Romans chapter 8. And I'm starting here at verse 14. For sin, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're going to start at Romans 6. No, my mistake. Excuse me. I told you I was getting caught up in this beautiful room here. <laughs> we're going to start with Romans chapter 8, and we're going to start with verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We're talking about who are you following? We're talking about the Holy Spirit role in our lives today as the spirit of truth. Let's now go to John chapter uh, 16. And I'm going to start reading from verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Hibbit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. I want you to highlight that. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. I'm on verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore say I, that he shall take a mine, and he shall show it unto you. We talked about last uh, two weeks ago, the role when Jesus walked the earth, what he did, he pointed us to the Father. Now that the, now Jesus has ascended, and he is now glorified at the right hand of the Father, hallelujah, he has sent us the Holy Spirit, and now the Holy Spirit will point us to Jesus. As we just read here, the role of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus. The role of the Holy Spirit is to point us to Jesus. The role of the Holy Spirit is to guide us into all truth and righteousness. It is the Holy Spirit voice 
that we need to be listening to today. Not the media, not our best friends, not so-and-so, but the Holy Spirit. Everything that we hear today, we need to line that up with the word of God. We need to seek God's face and see if these things be true. I want to encourage you guys, for everyone out there that is relying on the media and thinking that the media is giving you truth to what's going on in this world today, take it to the Father. Pray over it. One of the jobs, one of the things that I'm noticing in the media today, what they are, they are intentionally and deliberately spewing out things as number one, that's not true, to incite fear. We are of God believers. And what you hear in the media, if it, if it is inciting fear in you and it's making you afraid, it's making you intimidated, it's making you afraid to go outside, it's making you afraid to live, that's not God. Because God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love power, and of sound mind. So if you're hearing something, whether it's from the media, whether it's from a friend, or whomever, if it's making you become fearful, it's something that you need to take to the Lord and begin to pray on and see what God has to say about the situation. Allow his truth to, allow, allow his light to shine the truth on that situation. And as we just saw here in John, that's the role of the Holy Spirit to lead us, and to guide us into all truth. And as I said in the beginning, the first, um, in John, uh, first John chapter 4, there's two spirits out there. There's two spirits in the world today. Two, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I want to encourage each and every one of you, do not follow behind the spirit of error. And the only way that you're not going to follow behind the spirit of error is if you are... If you have joined yourself, your spirit, allowed your spirit to uh, surrender unto the Holy Spirit so that he can lead you and he can guide you. And let me tell you, believers, the Holy Spirit, God is real. He's real. He's not just some far out deity out there in outer space in cosmos somewhere that, that's untouchable, that does not feel our infirmities, that does not feel our weakness, that does not understand or know that we're confused. He did not leave us here to fend for ourselves. When Jesus told his disciples, I, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm going to send a comforter back to you. I'm going to send a counselor back to you. I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you the strengthener. I'm going to send you the standby. I'm going to send you the spirit of truth. That was for us too. That was for us too. He had no intentions on letting us, just leaving us here in this world to fend for ourselves, to try to figure things out for ourselves because we cannot. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. As a matter of fact, God's resource, God's knowledge is so much, uh, it's vast, it's endless, it's limitless. As I said in the beginning, the Holy Spirit is God. And he, and he possesses the, all the attributes, all the divine attributes that God the Father has. He's all present, he's all knowing, and he's all powerful. That is what's dwelling in you. And that's why God wants us to begin to embrace it, to, to identify our, to identify ourselves with it, get to know it, get to know him intimately in the person of the Holy Spirit so that he can lead us and so he can guide us into all truth and righteousness because he's the only one that knows the truth. He's the only one. So I know many of you probably out there saying, you know, I hear this all the time. Yes, the Holy Spirit will guide me into all truth and righteousness. But how does that happen? How can I surrender? How can I yield? How, how, can, how can I just let the Holy Spirit guide me? I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, but where do I begin? I'm glad you asked that. And what I will say to you believers, it takes work. It's not easy. It takes work. We have to invest in God. And the challenge today is so many people they want a quick fix. They want the microwave version. You cannot have the microwave version of God and expect and, 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 and expect to live this um, upright, uh, perfect, holy, powerful, victorious walk. It, it doesn't happen that way. It does not happen that way. You have to put the time in. You, you have to invest. You know, like anything in your life that you want to see mature, that you want to see grow, that you want to see develop, you invest in it. 
If you want to see your finances grow, you invest. If you want to see your life grow, uh, you want to see your, I'm not talking about your natural life, you invest in it. It's the same for God. It's the same thing for God. As I said in the beginning, Ephesians 1, yes, we are all sealed with the Holy Spirit from the moment that we accept Jesus Christ in our life. But do we reflect the new life? No. And that's why we see so many people, they're saved, their spirit is renewed, but they still continue on that old path. They continue on to display the old nature in, instead of uh, reflecting the new nature because they have not taken time to invest in God. As I said, it does not happen automatically. So if you are sincere and you really want to be led by the Spirit of God, you really tired of knocking your head up against the wall, you're really tired of being like that hamster going around that real uh, wheel over and over and over again and not going anywhere, you really sincere about knowing how to handle that uh, situation on your job, you're really serious about trying to uh, knowing how to handle that situation in your home, in your family, with your children, you're really serious about the direction that your ministry should go in, invest in God. Invest in God. He's not a microwave God. We got to put some time in. And I'm going to I'm going to share with us three steps that we can do today to begin to invest in God. And to show him that we are serious about being led by his spirit. We are serious about following him. We are serious about allowing the spirit of truth guide us and direct us. Number one is pray. Yes, we got to pray. Prayer should be our lifestyle. And one thing about with, with us believers, when we pray, prayer helps us. To get a better understanding of the mind of God. That's what prayer does. Because you're spending intimate time with him. You're getting to know him. You're getting to know his nature. And as you spend intimate time with God, he will begin to reveal more of himself to you. The Bible tells us that he who hungers and thirsts after God will be fed. And we're talking about spiritually. So if you begin to pray, that becomes your lifestyle. Now you're letting God know, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know your mind. I want to know your thoughts. I want you to download your thoughts, your ideas into my mind so that I can articulate them out of my mouth. He will give you, he will give you that. You will begin to uh, obtain a better understanding of who he is. But you got to pray. You have to spend time with him. Number two. We're talking about learning how to be led by the Spirit of God, learning how to surrender and yield and yield to His Spirit. We have to read and meditate on the Word of God. Yes, believers, as I said earlier, we have to invest in God. It's not easy. It doesn't come automatically. We have a role that we have to play in this. We have to read and we have to medica meditate. And I'm not talking about just reading the Scripture. I'm talking about Die, I'm talking about diving into these uh, scriptures. I'm talking about digesting them. I'm talking about swallow them and then uh, bring them back up again. What God told Joshua in uh, Joshua 1.8, he told him to meditate on this word day and night and observe to do all that is written in this word. Then your way shall be a success. Then you shall be prosperous. Many of us are looking for success. Many of us are looking for God's blessing. Many of us are looking to be prosperous in whatever area it is in our life that we're seeking God to succeed or be prospering in. But God said, he already gave you the answer. Meditate on my word day and night and observe, observe to do all that is written therein. In layman's term today in the 21st century, meditate on the word of God. Meditate, read his word. You got to get in his word. And not only do you have to read his word and meditate, he said, do it. He tell us to be a doer and not a hearer of the word. And not only a hearer. So many of us, we hear the word of God. We probably can write a Bible. We probably can write another version of the Bible. We probably can write commentaries. How much of the word are we applying to our life? That's the key there. We have to not only read the word, but we have to apply this word. We have to walk this word out. We got to walk it out, saints. Not just read it and sit on it. Oh, no. 
We got to walk it out. If we really want to be led of the Spirit of God, we really want to know God, we got to begin to apply the word, meditate, and do what he tells you to do. The third thing, um, as we are learning to be led of the Spirit of God, we want to train and recognize, we want to train and recognize the inward witness. As we said, that we are all sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now we need to learn how to, we need to train our spirit, our human spirit, because we still have a free will. That's why it does, that's why reflecting that new life is not automatic. It's a conscious effort because we still have our free will. God did not make us robots. But what we have to learn how to do is recognize and to train our inward spirit to hear the voice of God. Because God does not lead us by our five senses. He's a spirit, and he leads us inwardly. He leads us by our spirit, as we just saw in Romans 8, where we just read that those that are the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. So if we want to hear God's voice, if we want to be led of the Lord, we have to begin to train our spirit to recognize his voice. And how do you train your spirit to recognize his voice? By spending time with him, as we said, the first two points, by prayer and in his word. Because that's how he's going to lead us. It's not, um, very few people probably heard an audible, loud voice from the Lord. But most of God's leading for us today in the 21st century is an inward leading. It's that small, still voice. That you will hear in your spirit. That's letting you know that that is the Holy Spirit leading you. But you have to. But we have to learn how to surrender and how to yield. Because remember, as we said earlier, there are two spirits in the in the world: the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. There are many voices out there. But what Jesus told. But what, what did Jesus tell us in John? He said, "But my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow." And that word no is intimate. That's an intimacy that describes because his sheep have been intimate with him. His sheep has been have spent time with him. It's like when you're married to someone, you you could be in a room with a hundred uh, men or a hundred women, but when your spouse speak up, when your spouse say something, you're going to be able to identify your spouse from all the other spouses in that room. Because you have been intimate with your spouse and you know your, your spouse's voice. And that's what Jesus means when he says that my sheep know my voice. That's the level of intimacy. Because you have been intimate with him. You have been with him in your, your, your quiet time in prayer. You have been with him in the word. You have meditated. You have allowed that word to penetrate. So you know his voice. So our time is about up here. And there's just so much to say uh, regarding the um, Holy Spirit. But we're going to end this today. And I just want to lead us all in a you know, prayer for the whole, those of us who already are, are, are saved. We're going to just ask God to just continue to teach us how to embrace his spirit. How teach us how to be led of his spirit. Mold, uh, mold our spirit and shape our spirit so that we can hear and understand your spirit, Lord. So that we would not go to the left, but we would not fall in the ways of of the unrighteous our voice, but we will always know your spirit. That's my prayer for myself this today, and I pray that for you as well. For those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, well, you're not going to hear the Holy Spirit until you come to him. So if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today so that you can be led of the Holy Spirit, please repeat these words after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Acknowledging, acknowledging my sins, acknowledging that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. But God, Jesus, you sent your son, your only begotten son, to die for my sins, past, present, and future. And I acknowledge that, and I acknowledge that you rose him from the dead. And now I ask him to come into my life to be my Lord and to be my Savior. I accept the finished, the completed work of Jesus Christ on Calvary where he shed his blood so that I can be saved. If you said that if you said that prayer and you really meant it, you are now in the family of God. 
You are now saved. You are now sealed with his Holy Spirit. I encourage you now to embrace it and to ask him to continue to lead you and to guide you into all truth and righteousness. Well, family, I love you guys. I enjoyed today coming before you to talk. Have a blessed week. Amen.